Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I I will echo uh, as the pastor said for the souls being saved. That's the greatest thing Amen. you can possibly do Amen. in this world is get somebody saved and take them with you. Yeah. I, I sat down a long time ago and I thought, what what would be the best use I could possibly make out of my life? And I come to that conclusion. Amen, the best way you can spend your life is getting somebody else to them getting ready to go to heaven. Because yeah. everything else is going to burn up. That's right. Right. I know people that, that spend their whole life trying to get a, a somebody elected in, in, in politics. And I mean, we need good politicians in office, right. but that's not the main thing. That's right. I, I know people who spend uh, all their time trying to get people to vote a certain way or going to Washington to lobby and hold signs about abortion. And I'm all for that. But that is not the greatest thing you can do. Right. Greatest thing you can do is go soul winning, y'all. Yeah. And get you a handful Amen. of tracks and be a witness to everybody you can. And I mean every one of y'all. You don't have to be a genius or a Bible scholar. Uh, that would leave all of us out, right? Amen. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, uh, you'll bring others to church with you and snatch as many as you can yeah. and take them with you when you go out here. Uh, enjoy being here with, us, uh, with you this weekend. And it's quickly coming to a close. We'll have this morning service and then tonight, and then that'll be it. Tomorrow morning I'll be headed home. We've had some very, people ask me about the weather. It got cold a few mornings, but it's basically been nice, but it's coming this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wednesday morning, or Thursday morning, 26 degrees. And uh, so uh, a little, chilly, little chillier uh, than here. Uh, then it's going to get up to about uh, 60 in the day, so it'll be all right. Uh, but... Uh, I appreciate this church. I want to say again, our, our prayers go out for, for Pastor Bill uh, over there in the hospital this morning, and I uh, hope he's feeling well, um, and we're still much in prayer for him. Uh, all right. Now, what, I, what I'd like to do this morning, if the Lord would help me, I want to take a few minutes and build up to what I'm going to be doing in the, in the preaching service at 11 o'clock. Now, everybody, everybody in the world is talking about uh, the war going on uh, right now over yonder in Israel and uh, what we call, what they call the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict. And I'm going to try. I'm not, a, I'm not a great historian, uh, but I do have a Bible, and I do believe the Bible. And I believe the Bible is the final authority in all matters of faith Amen. and practice. In other words, if the Bible teaches it, you can take it to the bank and, and it's good. So uh, I think what, I, what I'd like to do this morning is uh, maybe take just, just, just a few minutes in our Sunday school hour and uh, look at, um, look at uh, the, 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 main, where that, the reason they're fighting over that land. And that's what they're fighting over this morning, that piece of property. Yeah. Wonder why that one little piece of land yeah. way up there in the Middle East yeah. has the attention of the whole world right. all the time. All the time, always has. Man. You know, there's something very, very special yeah. about that one little spot. Man. I don't know if you've ever uh, done this study or not, but... Um, we're going to look at something uh, in, in your King James Bible uh, that's called the Law of First Mention. Yep. Yeah. How many of y'all have ever heard of the Law yeah. of First Mention? Yeah. Well, many of you have. Yeah. And what, what that simply means is lots and many, many times, the first time something is mentioned in the Bible sets a, a precedent yeah. for how it's used throughout history and through the rest of the Bible. Right. It's amazing. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, well, it must be a coincidence because the people who wrote that had no idea. And, uh, but, you know, after a while, it starts piling up and piling up and piling up, and it cannot be a coincidence. Biblical hermeneutics, that's a fancy word of saying the studies of the principles and methods of interpreting Bible text, uh, is, uh, is, is real. And so this morning... I want you to take, get your Bible handy, and we're going to do a little study here in Sunday school. Uh, 
They don't call it Sunday school for nothing. We're going to school, all right? We're in school. So class, uh, uh, get, your, get your Bibles out. Get them ready. And we're going to look at the uh, law of first mention, and then you'll understand why here in just a few minutes. Uh, take your Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 14. And, of course, you know the, that word Genesis uh, looks like genes, genetics, uh, the beginning and Genesis teaches us the beginning of everything. And they say just about every principle, every uh, belief, every system, all great questions are answered in the first 10, ten chapters of Genesis. Amazing. Amazing. Ain't no other book in the world like this book right here. Now, what, what we're going to see this morning is what we call the law of first mention. Now, before I read this, let me give you just two couple quick, quick examples. For example, the first mention of the word beer. I, 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 I bet you there ain't, they ain't a beer joint in Fort Myers that knows where the word beer first come from and what it means. But it's in Genesis 16. You don't, you don't have to look at that, but you can if you want to. Um, there, and, and it's in verse 14. And you know what it means? A well. It's a well. It was a egg, drink a well dry. You know that? That's where that come from. See it? Genesis uh, 16, 16, 15, 14. Wherefore the well was called Beer Lahori, which is between Kadesh and Bered. Now, that word beer by itself is also mentioned in Numbers, and it says, Where is the well? Or beer. So the first time it's mentioned, it sets a precedent. It means drinking all through history. The word love, all Hollywood talks about is love. Boy, almost, I mean, it's love. Every movie, every Hollywood story, all them magazines, all those interviews, oh, it's in love, and I just love this, and I'm in love with them, and then I was in love with them, but now I'm not in love with them, and now I'm in love with them. With them. But I'm really in love with me is the reason I'm not in love with them. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, all they talk about is love, 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 and none of them people know where the love come from or what it means. You know where the word love is first mentioned? Anybody know that? The first time the word, now you'd think now, the, uh, something as important as love, yeah. something as important as love, I mean, that's, that's going to set a precedent, brother. Mm -hmm. First time the word love is mentioned is in Genesis 22. Yep. Yep. And you know what he's talking about? A man's love for his son, yeah. giving him as a sacrifice. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> my, 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 my. Yeah. So, so uh, Abraham, uh, take thou son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. And a man loving his son and giving a sacrifice, that's love. And 1 John in the New Testament confirms it. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son for us. You can't beat that Bible, y'all. So that thing's so far ahead of science yeah. and politics, and well, they never will get caught up. Yeah, that's, right. uh, that, uh, that's the first mention of the word love. Uh, the word love is not uh, is some kind of lustful, romantic, erotic, ungodly Hollywood movie. Right. The word love means a man loves his son yeah. and gave his life as a sacrifice. Right. That's love. Yeah. That's real love. For God so loved the world that he what? Gay. The world says, I love you because what you do for me. Right. See, that's the, that's the world definition of love. You make me feel good, so I love you. No, uh, you love what they do for you. Right. Real love is sacrificially right. loving your son enough to sacrifice him right. and let him die. Isn't that something? Now, let's think of the number 13 since it's Halloween. Uh, the number 13 here in Genesis 14 and uh, let's look here at um, uh, Genesis chapter 14. And uh, uh, what, what, what verse are we looking for? Oh, I'm sorry, 13. I'm sorry. Genesis 13. 14, 4. Uh, you're right, you're right. We're going back to Genesis 13. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 4. 
Genesis 14, 4. This is the first time the number 13 is mentioned. Twelve years served they Cheddar Laomer, and in the thirteenth year they rebelled. Isn't that something? Here we are in 2023, and the first time it's mentioned, 13 is connected with rebellion throughout history. We're not superstitious, but we're Bible believers. And I know, I know people that carry the number 13 and 666, maybe too far, and, and I'm the same way, I'll admit. Uh, you know, if, 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 uh, I want to sit in seat 13 on the airplane. It probably means nothing, but uh, they don't even, used to not even have 13th floor on a, on a hospital or an elevator uh, because of superstition. Now, now that's, that's, there's nothing. Uh, you know, uh, if you want to give me $13, I'll take it. Uh, I, you, know, uh, you know what I mean. There's nothing, there's nothing uh, uh, evil about that certain number. Something good might happen to you on, on 13th. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's something to that. There's something to it. I know people, uh, they, they fill up their car and it's $66 and, and, and they'll run it over and fill it out on the ground and everything to, to keep from it being 66. I'm the same way, but, but really that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. But there is something to this number 13. Now, look at Genesis uh, at, if you don't believe there's 13 represents rebellion, if you, you wait till you get a teenager. Yeah. Something happens between 12 and 13. Yeah. Something, they get full of the devil about it. And I, Halloween, October 31st is a backward 13. And that's what the world's going to be celebrating here in two days. And it's the devil's holiday. It's the devil's favorite day. That's right. That's right. Christians have no business participating in witchcraft and call. It's not cute. It's not funny. I'm talking about everything from witches to Harry Potter, brother. It's all of the devil. Every bit of that. I'm not against having a festival like we did last night. I'm not against giving candy, whatever, giving out tracts. That's all good and fine. But boy, when you get into that occult stuff, you, you mess around with something you ain't got no big fool with. Uh, it's demonic. So let's look back here in Genesis 13. Genesis 13, 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. You know that's the first time the word sinner is mentioned in the Bible? First time anybody's called a sinner is in Genesis 20 or Genesis 13, 13. Mm. But think about that a week or two. It's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, y'all. I didn't write this. Uh, the first time love, man giving his son. Yeah. First time beer, drinking. First time sinner, sodomy. Yeah. Yeah. My, 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 my. And, 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 and the weird thing is, it said they were wicked sinners. Mm -hmm. 13 letters. Yeah. Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah, 13 letters. Yeah. Homosexuality, 13 letters. I ain't write it. Brimstone and fire, 13 letters. So all of that is associated with rebellion and, and sin. They say that 85% of the 13s in the Bible are connected with bad and evil and wrong. And 15% uh, is good and five is neutral. Now, if, uh, there's always exceptions to the rule. He said, well, I know somebody's born on Friday 13th and they turned out to be a preacher. That's fine, good, wonderful. That's an exception to the rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The exception proves the rule. Right. It don't destroy the rule, it proves it. Right. Um, right. It always does. The general rule is uh, this, 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 this. He said, well, I know a Muslim uh, that believes that Jesus is God and wants peace to everybody. That's good, that's good. But that's not what their religion teaches. That's an exception. See, that's where we mess up. We, we pull out an exception and try to overthrow the rule. Yeah, well, I, I, know, a, I know a guy uh, who gets drunk every day and he helps out his neighbor. Well, that's good. That's wonderful. That's exception. 
That's not the general rule. And the, the word of God uh, is all the way through that. Uh, turn in your Bible to Ezra, book of Ezra. And uh, when you find Ezra, raise your hand. There's one, two, see what y'all been reading. Three, uh, all right, see what you've been spending your time in. Ezra chapter two and verse 13. Adonachim, Adonachim, you see that there? Had 666 kids. I'll give you a hint, it's in the Old Testament. Ezra, Ezra. I, I'm, not, I'm not doing this to embarrass you, I'm doing this to push you. I'm trying to push you. Read your Bible. Ezra, Ezra 2.13, all right, you got it? 2 and verse 13, Adonachim. You know what Adonachim means? It means the Lord of the rebellion. I just something. I mean, on and on and on. 666 uh, of his kids. And he's the 13th name on the list. Adonachim, Lord of the rebellion. All right, let's, let's turn to, well, I'll just give you these. We won't have time to turn to all of them. Nimrod. Uh, the, the mighty hunter, 13th yeah. from Adam. Yeah. Kids have to go to school 13 years. When I went, they only went 12. That's before they kicked God and the Bible out. Right. They kicked God and the Bible out. Then we, we graduated right before, uh, after that, and so they added another year. Instead of 12, like 12 tribes of Israel, now it's 13, number of rebellion. Yeah. Kindergarten. Kindergarten just a waste of time anyway. Uh, I got, well, Frankie's in kindergarten right, uh, now, and uh, he's loving it, but they don't do nothing. I mean, my goodness. They don't know how to count their toes. And, and, and other ABC kids ought to know that anyway. Time to go to first grade. Uh, that's just a good reason mom get rid of them so she can go back to work full time and do what she really wants to do. Uh, but uh, not always, but some. Now, your dollar bill, uh, but while, you, while we're looking for some more scripture, let's return to Revelation 13, 13. I read it last night. That dollar bill you got in your pocket has 13 stars, 13 stripes, 13 arrows in the eagle's hand, left hand, 13 leaves in his right hand, 13 layers on that pyramid. And I know they had 13 colonies. I know, but... I'm telling you, 1 Timothy 6.10 said the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. That's, right. That's, right. That's something to think about, y'all. That's something to think about. Now, look at Revelation 13.13. 13. And you'll see there, Antichrist. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of of men, the Antichrist, deceiving the whole wide world. Now, as I talked about last night, when the Antichrist comes, he'll have power to call down fire from heaven. He'll have power to do all, I mean, do crazy stuff like everything you would think that Jesus would do if he came. Like, me and you know the real Jesus, and we know when he comes, he, he's not going to come down here and walk around healing people. When he comes, he's going to call us out, and then when he comes back, he's going to come to rule and reign. Yeah. But see, the world don't know that. That's right. The people you live around don't know that. Right. Did you know, you know why the Jews are in so much trouble this morning? Because they rejected him as their Messiah. Amen. There's some Jews that got saved, yeah. but as a nation, they rejected him. Right. And boy, I'm telling you, the dumbest thing, the worst thing they ever said in their life was, his blood be on us and on our children. Right, they ought not to have said that. Yeah, right. And buddy, has it ever or has it ever? Yes. And it's still this morning happening. So when Jesus came, uh, they, 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 when Jesus came, he came working miracles and in his Father's name and showing them the Father and showing them all the great things. And they said, nope, nope, nope. Uh, 
uh, search the scripture. For no, 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 the prophet, no, no prophet could come out of, uh, out of Galilee. So, see, they're wrong on their interpretation of scripture. That's why it's so important to get it right. They missed his first coming because they didn't understand that scripture. They saw all them Old Testament scriptures that said he's going to smash their enemies and rule and everything. They thought that was the first coming. That's the second coming. And so you can see how the Bible, if you don't get it right, it'll wind up damning you instead of saving you. It's two-edged sword. Cut you in, cut you out. And uh, they, so they rejected the Messiah. And you know what the Lord told them? The Lord told them, he said, look, y'all, you, you messed up. He said, I am coming in my Father's name and you, and you won't refute, receive me. Yeah. If another shall come in his own name, right. him yeah. you will receive. Right. 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 So right now, all the Muslims, all the Orthodox Jewish people are looking for the Messiah right. Right. the first time. Yeah. Yeah. The Muslims will honor Christ like he was a man but do not believe he is ever crucified on a cross. And the, the, the Jews don't believe he was the Messiah at all. So they messed up. So when the Antichrist shows up, they're going to say, it's him. And he's going to come and say, peace be unto thee. And I, I am a Muslim, I am a Jew, I am a Christian. I, well, I've come to bring all religions together. And the Catholic Church is just going to say, wow, this is him. This is the Messiah. And the Christians are going to say, or the, Christ, the professed Christians, uh, we'll be up there getting our wrinkles ironed out of our wedding garment. Amen? Getting ready for the big wedding day. That's right. That's right. We'll be getting our wedding uh, dress on and getting ready. And down here, he's going to say, I am he. Yeah. How do we know that you are he? Fire down from heaven. Yeah. Heal the coronavirus. Yeah. Hey, all you got to do is take my mark yeah. and we'll all be together and you won't get sick. Everybody will be universal income yeah. and finally, peace on earth, good will to man. Yeah. Yeah. Son, they're going to swallow it hook, line, and yeah, sinker. Look at Revelation 13, 13. Yeah. As we're studying, 13, 13. Yeah. Halloween's day is here. Yeah. Amen. 13, 13. Yeah. He doth great wonders and make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's like Project Blue Beam, yeah. like I was preaching about last night. Yeah. Yeah. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. Now, there's, there's a lot of Bible preachers and I, 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 I fall into this opinion. I can't prove it. I can't prove it, but I, I believe it. To be a perfect imitation of Christ, the Antichrist would come performing miracles. And he's got the whole world deceived. And then he'll have a deadly wound that's going to affect his right eye and he's right on. Let's just say, can't prove this, okay? Let's just say that he gets assassinated. Yeah. And everybody goes, oh, no! Oh, he was the greatest thing that ever happened. I can't believe this. We finally had peace. And every camera in the world is on him. And there he's laying over there in the street yeah. of Jerusalem. And been, been to Rome and, been to, uh, and, the, and the cameras on him all over the world. This is the most solemn time we've ever seen in the history of the world. The Pope comes down. The, the Dalai Lama and crazy people like that, uh, they're all there saying, and morning, and all of a sudden his eyes open after three days and nights. It said he had a deadly wound, and his deadly wound was healed. Oh, my goodness. Look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. And he causeth all small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand and in the forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, hearing his wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 603 score and six. Six, 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 just like the rock singers uh, sing about and, and have on their, around their necklaces and stuff. So he, he pops up. 
And everybody goes, it's him. It's him. He rose from the dead. He's a counterfeit of Christ. And let's just say, but you don't think he's got the world's attention then? Son, they'll go crazy. The world will go crazy over him. Especially when he brings peace. Especially when he comes. And this Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the, the Jews right now are out of fellowship with God. And that's why they're having all them problems. They rejected the Messiah, and they said, his blood be on us and on our children. And Lord, Lord says, oh boy. Here come the Holocaust. Hitler kills six million of them right. in the gas chambers. We'll, talk, we'll show that in just a few minutes. And all, you know what, boat loose over there ever since. Yeah. But you know what? The Lord looks down and he said, uh, that's still my people, that's earthly right. people. Amen. And I ain't through with them yet. Look at Romans chapter 11. Yeah. Romans chapter 11. I may mention this again in the preaching service, but briefly here this morning. Yeah. Romans chapter 11. This should be easier for you to find than Ezra. Yeah. It's in the New Testament. Yeah. Romans chapter number 12. 11, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Romans chapter number 11. Here Paul the Apostle Paul by the Holy Ghost is talking about Israel as a nation, earthly, earthly Jews. Yeah. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. That's what he's talking about. Right. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, hold your finger there just a second and let me explain something to you. I, Paul said, I'm an Israelite and I am a seed of Abraham. He's talking about physical. Right. Me and you are spiritual children yeah, right. of Abraham. Right. Uh, uh, grafted into that tree and adopted by the Lord as part yeah, of, his, uh, of his yeah. church. Uh, yeah. There's only three groups of wor in the world, yeah. Jew, Gentile, and church. Right. Uh, yeah. the, you're, if you're, a, you're a Jew, you're not a Gentile. If you're, a Gent if you're not a Jew, you are a Gentile. Right. And if you're a Christian, you're in the church. Yeah. So a saved Jew is in the church. A saved Gentile is in the church. A lost Gentile is just a Gentile out in the nations of the world. And a lost Jew is, an, is a, just a lost Jew physically related to Abraham. Now Abraham had two sons and there's where the fight comes from. Ishmael by Hagar, the handmaiden. Ishmael became the father of all the nations that are Muslim, Islam, yeah. Yeah. Muhammad, Iraq, Iran, right. uh, 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 Sudan, Jordan, right. all those countries that surround Israel. As a matter of fact, many Muslims believe, not the Quran don't say it, but many Muslims believe that Abraham took Ishmael up on that mount to sacrifice him yeah. Yeah. and not Isaac. But the promises that God made were through Isaac yeah. and Amen. Jacob. Yeah. Jacob was the father of the 12 tribes. Yeah. And there's where the promises of God right. came through. Amen. That's what they don't know on the news. Yeah. If they do, they won't say it. They get on the news and say, this war has been brewing for decades. You're crazy. Yeah. This war has been brewing for millennium. Yeah. Thousands of years. Yeah. And Galatians said that. He that is born after the flesh, he that is born after the spirit. So Ishmael, you know what the Bible said about Ishmael? He'll be a wild man. That's what it said. I didn't write it. It said he'll be a wild man and every man's hand will be against him and he'll be against everybody. He'll be against everybody and everybody's against him. That's what we're seeing in the world today. Uh, my heart goes out to innocent Palestinians. There's, there's little kids there's, from a humanitarian standpoint, they're just as important, and they're like, they suffer too. Just like I don't, I don't have any good feeling about anybody being blown up or families separated. Or, I mean, war is, war is hell on earth, and and it's awful. It's awful. But those kids are not suffering because Jews attack them. Those kids are suffering because Hamas are terrorists and attack Israel and are using human shields and they don't care if them kids get bowed up or not, even if they're, they're related to them. 
They're a wild man. They're a wild man. And they say that if, if let's just say, let's just say, I'm, I'm not an expert, but let's just say, if Hamas, all the Palestinians, all the Muslim countries, laid down their weapons and said, okay, no more fighting, we're done, we're just going to get along in peace. You know what would happen? There would be peace in the Middle East. If that happened. If Israel laid down their weapons and said, no more fighting, we're going to destroy all our weapons, no more guns, no more bombs. You know what would happen? They'd be blown off the map. Exactly. Amen, brother. Amen. That'll tell you something. I'm not supporting wicked Israel. Israel is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, Amen. where our Lord was crucified over there in the Bible. Amen. So I'm definitely not. Uh, they are, they are, um, they are uh, enemies for our sake, but they're beloved for the Father's sake. God hath not. Look at verse two, Romans 11:2. God hath not cast away His people, which He foreknew. What ye not that the scripture saith as he lies, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel? Not, not Ishmael, Israel. You know what Israel means? Jacob. Same word. His name means Jacob. Saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I only am left, am left alone, they seek my life. But what saith the ancient God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the, to the knee of the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were, by, were, were blinded. Um, now, let's go back to our, to our study here about the law of first mention. Before we do, look over in verse, same chapter, look over in verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. That don't mean every Jew individually. It means Israel as a nation shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer who shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That ain't happened yet. It's going to happen in the future. They're going to see the truth after the Antichrist turns on them. And they'll finally get right with God and the Lord will establish them. The meat, they'll, they'll inherit the earth, the new earth. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Amen. He's going to do it one day. Amen. Now, back to our study before I get through here on the law of first mention. Guess what? The first time the word sinner, wicked sinner is mentioned is Genesis 13, 13. Yeah. Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Law of first mention. The first time the word love is mentioned is Genesis 22. A man loving his son enough to sacrifice him. Think about that. That's, that carries throughout history. The greatest definition of love is God so loved the world that he gave his son for old dogs like me and you, old sinner like me. By the way, all we are is just old Gentile dogs that got in. And they reject, rejected their Messiah, brother, and that the door opened so that me and you could get drug in. We ain't nothing special. We're just outsiders. We deserve to be in hell today. But thank God Jesus died. Pay the price for an old sorry good for nothing guy like me so I can go to heaven when I die. So don't ever stick your nose up in there like you're something special. Uh, you, we're all just sinners saved by grace. My mom always told me, she said, ain't nobody no better than nobody else. Ground is level at the foot of the cross. But God deals with nations differently depending on how they, they treat him and his word. And so the word beer, got that in Genesis 16? It means a well. Drinking. Yeah. They ain't a bootlegger in Fort Myers knows that. Right. I guess you still got bootleggers. I guess there's so many beer joints now you don't need to put the poor bootleggers out of joint. I think they ought to reverse that and they ought to be against the law for the government to sell it and let yeah. the bootleggers sell it. Yeah. If the drug dealer's got to sell pot, right. That's right. the bootleggers ought to get to sell the beer. Yeah. And I ain't a bootlegger and I ain't for drinking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That just 
crooked government. That's why they're against cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Bunch of hypocrites. Yeah. They, uh, they, they won't even put nobody smoking a cigarette on TV because it might be a bad influence. And everybody on there drinks alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they get the money out of that and the farmers get the money out of the, out of the tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't get me started. Yeah. You know what they told me? They, they said, uh, uh, now those movies, there's no, there's no evidence that those movies influence people because you get all these killers. You know where all these killers got their, their ideas? From Hollywood, yeah, brother. Right. Yeah. I watch it movies and TikTok and stuff. Yeah. I mean, when I was little, I, when I watched a basketball game, and I'd sit there and I'd watch every move them guys made. And I've always, I mean, I'm too little, and I, I, but, I, but I've always loved basketball. I still do. I still play. I'm supposed to play tomorrow night at home, Lord willing. And, and I'd sit there and watch every one of them guys, every move they made, and as soon as it got half time, I'd grab my ball, and I went outside, and I'd try to do this, that. I do fade away. I can fade away. I can dunk. I and, and I don't know if I'm trampoline. And, and I, I, I backward dunk. Bam! Man, I just bam, hit the alley oop. Everything. And I mimicked what them guys did. Yeah. Yeah. I mimicked. Don't tell me that movies don't have influence on people's behavior. All I know is, why are these guys going in shooting schools? Why are these people going in shooting schools? I tell you, it's demonic influence and every single serial killer yet has one thing they all like and that's what we call kill your mama music something that'll make you want to shoot somebody it will don't tell me that music don't influence you it does I mean I got a video I can prove it and you, know, you, got to, you got if I want to see them guys play ball I want to be like them if I hey, your guys, are, I want to break something. I want to kill, shoot the school. There's, there's songs with lyrics like that. Yeah, right. Then I'm going to do what they say. Yeah. Right. So, in closing, guess where the word holy first shows up? What would be the definition of the word holy? Ooh, the Catholic Church? No. Nope. Not even close. Brother Danny, what is first called holy? A holy shrine? Nope. Sure ain't. Brother Danny, what is first called holy? A, a church house? A temple? Nope. Sure ain't. Brother Danny, what's first called holy? Creation? No. A, a prophet? Somebody in the Bible? Adam and Eve? It don't even say Holy Spirit in Genesis. The word holy ain't, don't even mention in Genesis. It said the Spirit of God moved across the face of the water. Yeah. But don't say it's holy. Right. You're right. Exodus chapter 3. He don't know the Bible. He's looking it up on his phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm just kidding you, brother. Exodus chapter 3. You ain't going to believe it. First time the word holy is mentioned sets a precedent throughout history. And lo and behold... Moses standing over there on Mount Sinai, which is originally part of Israel. They own that land too. All the way, uh, God promised Abraham from the Nile River to the Euphrates River. That took that corner of Africa and all of what we now know as the Holy Land. Moses standing there and the Lord turned aside. And the Lord saw that he turned aside. Verse 4. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Amen. Amen. The, isn't that odd? The first thing the Lord called holy was a piece of dirt. Yeah. 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 And it was ground. Yeah. Isn't it yeah. weird that he just cursed the ground for Adam? Hey, Adam said, I cursed to be the ground for thy sake. The whole ground was cursed. But then he calls this one little spot holy. So when God looked down from heaven, he saw one little spot in the world and said, that's holy ground right there and it's mine. And I've given it to the children of Abraham through Isaac and Jacob and it's going to be theirs forever. There is no such thing as a Palestinian state. Literally. It's Israel is a state. And, and they're, they're, you hear all this occupation, occupation. That's what the news media. Well, they, they're occupying the Islam land. No, they're not. It's their land to be start with. That's right. 
They got backslid and got kicked out. The Palestinians moved in. And now when they come back, they're just trying to take the land God gave them. And there's where we are today. I will go over this uh, a, little, a little different, bring up through history in the, in the preaching service. And so you understand that they're fighting over that land. Uh, the, the Muslims say, it's our land. The Jews say, nope, it's our land. And all the peace treaties in the world ain't going to fix that. The old Bin Laden, you know what he said? He said, there'll never be no peace and it to, as long as there's one Jew alive. Right. We're going to kill every single single one of them and, um, and get rid of them no matter what. Jihad. Right. That's, that's what that means. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a sad, sad, sad situation. Yeah. My prayers are for everybody. I, I can't stand the thoughts of older people and stuff. It, Palestinians right. with no food, no water, no electricity. I, I, that breaks our heart, and it ought to. We ought not to be glad about that. Right. Something wrong with somebody saying, ah, bless God, blow every one of them. No, I, I, you don't. Be careful of that kind of attitude as a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're people. Right. Yeah. And, they, and they need Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we need missionaries and, and to preach to them. But yeah. it, it's the, their terrorist choice is to keep, keep them locked in so that no missionary can preach to them. And so, so some of the dumbest things I've seen on the news, and I've not got to see much of it, is all these people on our college campuses going around and, and, and protesting, and you got these LGBTQ, PRXYZ, XXX, whatever it is next week. You got them standing with signs saying, We're with Palestine, we stand with Palestine. How ignorant. How, you know what would happen to them if they went to Palestine? They'd kill them. You couldn't protest in Palestine. That's how ignorant people go to college are. That's sad, brother. Go to Yale and Harvard. And you're standing with, with people who want to cut your head off? Yeah. It's sad. The kids are so stupid, it's pitiful. And, and they don't know. They just hear somebody say, yeah, yeah, let's go. And it's a spirit that's got in. It's pitiful. It's so sad, so sad. So anyway, I'll stop right there. We're going to take a little short break for the preaching service here in just a few minutes. And uh, if you have any questions about this, Pastor Stan will be sure to answer them. I do not have all the answers. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day, God. Thank you for being good to us.